Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time, hello and welcome. I'm Laura. And I'm Zach. And today we're going to talk about some pros and cons of leaving in Ghana. All right, guys, so to start things off with the pros and cons of living in Ghana, those of you who have seen our previous videos, you know that both Laura and I have lived in Ghana for multiple years. Laura grew up there and I spent over three years there. But we're gonna go through our four main pros and cons of living in Ghana. Um, first off, we're gonna start with pros because, you know, Ghana's the best. The first thing is cheap things. And this was, this was my pro. Um, and Laura realized that when she got over here to the States. Yeah. But for those of you who, uh, who are living in Ghana and have never left the, the country, um, probably won't understand this, or you may. Um, for those of you who have traveled abroad, like to the UK or other countries like that, you understand how cheap things can be in Ghana. Um, I remember, for those, of you, for those of my Kumasi people, those who have traveled up there um, to Katia or Adum specifically, that's where like all the electronics in the big market are sold. Then you can get like an iPhone for like 6 million Ghana, which converted, um, I didn't do the math, but that's like almost a hundred bucks for like a new iPhone. Um, not the newest iPhone, not the like iPhone 12. Um, yeah, because I think those ones are about the same yeah, price. Yeah, those are actually about the same. Yeah. But when you have like older models or like used ones that get shipped mm -hmm. over, they're a lot cheaper than the used ones that get shipped over from here. Um, cause my brother-in-law, I always message him about stuff like that. And he's always asking me like, what are the prices of phones? And he's like surprised how expensive they are here. Yeah. Um, as well as just like anything, like, you know, if you go to the market, you can get like your food really cheap or you mm -hmm. can get, um, anything really cheap. Minus just my hair. <laughs> Yeah, the hair. That's true. Don't wash your hair. <laughs> I've learned how to do my own hair, like, by force. I would never do my hair back home. My sister-in-law can do her own hair. And I thought it was crazy, you know, like, how can you do that? But it took me a night to learn how to do my own hair because it's crazy expensive compared to back home. Like, first time I asked someone, hey, I want to do my hair. How much are you going to charge me? And the person was like, uh, what do you want to get? And I was like, just some simple cornrows. And she was like, oh, okay, 100 bucks. I was like, what? No way. So yeah, it's like prices almost are like six million now. Yeah, like, like with the new conversions. I was like, no way. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's expensive. Huh? And people here thought it was cheaper. Like, oh, a hundred dollars. That's a good deal. I was like, no, it's not. Like, yeah. you know. So yeah, yeah. and even cornrows was eighty dollars. Yeah, for the really cheap ones. Yeah, and I got it for eighty dollars. I remember when we were in Kumasi, it was like what twenty CDs? twenty bucks. 20 I mean twenty CDs. CDs. <laughs> Uh, which is like five bucks. Um, yeah. But then we went down to Accra and Accra was like 80 CDs uh -huh. or something. And I was like, oh. Like, that is so yeah, expensive. Like, <laughs> like, but now that we're in America, I'm like, okay, let's go back to Accra. I don't care. Like that's so cheap. So it's just all about your perspective, which yeah. is really, really funny and really cool. For those of you who have anything to comment or say, comment down below mm -hmm. um, because we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Your opinions, they yeah. matter to us. Or the first con is actually infrastructure. Um, the infrastructure of Ghana, as we all know, is, is pretty bad, um, especially is compared terrible. to like the US, obviously. Um, I don't even know where to, like roads, drains. Mm -hmm. Gutters and all those stuff. Right? Stop lights, stop signs, traffic. Like, it's just, and Even it, with buildings, like, you pay someone to build your house and you know what you want. Like my mom would tell them, I want like a lot of cement in my house or the bricks you guys are making because I want it to be, you know, strong and whatever. But the people building it, since they want to take some of the money or keep some for themselves, mm -hmm. they'll buy what they think will be able to manage or like something they can yeah. keep. Yeah, you know what I mean? So they just take some of your money, save it. And so it makes your building like, in a year or two, you you see the walls starting to chip off. Yeah. You know, like... 
Yeah, and if you're obviously you're on, you're on YouTube right now watching this, and so you've searched other people's YouTube videos, and there's a lot of Americans who go over to Ghana and, and build a house, and they just get ripped off. Even yeah. even Ghanaians get ripped get off. Get ripped by off. Ghanaians. Like, this is normal. You're in the same house with the person telling them what to do. You can still get ripped off. You're yeah. really smart about that. Yeah, and. The thing is, not everyone has to be licensed to do that work. Mm -hmm. So like here, you have to have like a license, like a, a bill of sale, and um, that's kind of getting off topic. But just the infrastructure of of Ghana, as we know, the gutters can overflow. All the water will drain to a certain part because they'll fix this side, but not this yeah. side. So Especially all the water, in Accra, like since it's a big city, mm -hmm. you just get flooded. And like, even Kumasi, a lot. like in in the bigger city areas. Um, yeah which is really dangerous too sometimes because people can actually die like the roads the roads are are, are getting better <laughs> i uh, think they're building a new road i saw it somewhere i'm not sure if that's real or not but people who know if, if you guys know it's true let us know i heard that they're building some roads in accra it's like a really nice road i saw a picture of it or was it the, know, the train thing that they're building or you mean um, actually a road, road i think it's actually a road i'm oh, not okay. sure if the tr it's kind of like curvy have you seen it well seen curvy yeah. roads but i don't know <laughs> it's it's really nice i don't know i'm not sure if that's real or not but yeah yeah, yeah i hope well, it is i'm sure they are because they've been doing lots of updates like especially in kumasi the cultural center the new mall that's coming yeah straight um, in the i think it's at the runabout yeah area so we're excited to get back there and check all those things out. The next pro is gonna be culture. So culture is just amazing. Like hands down, it's amazing. It's the best culture I've experienced. Like I've been to many different countries like Mexico. Mm -hmm. I've been to Europe. Uh, Europe's pretty similar to America, but they do have more culture than us. Americans, we're just like a mix, mix of, of everything. So we don't really have a, a culture to go behind except like maybe American football or, or baseball because we started those things like but on the culture in Ghana if you've ever been there if you live there it's just amazing there's cultural centers um just, just people amazing. the way the way they act you know? how they've kept that like even though there are so many more than things right now they've just still kept you know the culture they still keep it they still celebrate most of the things which is really amazing i'm sure most countries are just forgetting about their cultures i'm not sure but we've just kept ours because so it's important to us and yeah. that is really yeah and it's amazing and yeah and it's really good and i think that's really important to keep your culture and even here in america we do our best to incorporate lara's culture and the culture that i became accustomed to when i was there and it's really fun um but you have to find that happy medium like a mix of the two so they can melt together and with the newer generation of Ghanaians when I was there I noticed they're all trying to incorporate some of the good things from abroad into Ghana which is really helping Ghana um for starters YouTube there's big creators mm -hmm. in Ghana who are showing the good sides and the good parts of Ghana even sometimes the bad parts which are actually helping the country progress yeah. and for people to to view and see and get excited about going there because the more people from outside you get inside the more it'll help that country grow okay. yeah um so yeah the culture even just the environment the the, the feel of when you're there the music the next calm is kind of going right along with infrastructure but it's the government the Please. government <laughs> in Ghana is just corrupt. That's it. Like Everyone's police, corrupting Ghana. everything, even even. You like, know that police call themselves governments in Ghana. Yeah, like the law is in their hands. Yeah, and it's just when you can just bribe any little thing you do wrong, mm -hmm. it just buy your way out of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's just not reasonable. It's um, not right. Like here in America, I'm sure if you have a lot of money, you can bribe someone. But if you have a little bit of money, like take my 10 CDs or whatever you're going to slip, like it's not going to work. Yeah, like here I get scared to get pulled over because you can get in trouble. Yeah. But depending on what you're doing. But in Ghana, no one cares to be pulled over as long as you have from two cities to 10 cities or something like that. Like, yeah, I'm getting pulled over. So what, this police or cop guy is just going to ask for money and... That's it. Whether you have a driver's license, whether you're little, whether you're 
handicapped and you're not supposed to be driving, like whatever you're doing, no one cares. As long as you can, you know, buy your way out of it, yeah. you're good to go. And even the government is the one who's supposed to put funds towards fixing the infrastructure, but they don't because like, I'm sure the place they live is really nice. It is. Like you go to East <laughs> Lagoon, um, the really nice places in, in Accra. Um, the neighborhoods they live, they don't have any they issues. Look good. Yeah, they look really nice. The roads are really good. Um, but when you go kind of in places that aren't as important, yeah, obviously it's that way. So for the next pro, this is Laura's main thing. So I'll let her take over. <laughs> here. It's fruits. Fruits in Ghana are the best. I just know that the ones that we grow are like, I don't know, banana, popo, or we call papaya, <laughs> and stuff like that, which is really nice. I never appreciated it until I got here. When I went to the store, I was like, oh, there is pineapple, there is mango, I'm just gonna get it. And then I got home and I'm like, Good at all. what the heck am I eating? <laughs> I was really disappointed. I almost cried. I was like, this is not, this is not a fruit. Like, so five star, 10 star, whatever star we can give Ghana, the fruits are amazing. And it's, it's my favorite. Like, yeah. yeah. The fruits there, the, the food is all fresh. It's not processed. It's yeah. all just pretty natural, mm -hmm. which is really, really good for your body. Really good for your immune system. Really good for you overall. When we go outside, to different countries we get sick or like we get runny tummy like if you've ever known like an obruni or a foreigner or whatever who's come to ghana they usually almost always after eating like a, a real meal will get like get an upset stomach or like runny tummy just and then they're because... like it's because of germs no it's not <laughs> they're like they just got here they're getting germs yeah. no they're not <laughs> yeah because i i remember my first food was watch it and because I got there early in the morning and that that one is spicy so it makes sense mm -hmm. that's what I thought it was and it was hot there was a lot of shit doing that one and oh man <laughs> if you know you know I'm not gonna go into detail but if you know you know and it, it's it's not fun but now we eat Ghana foods almost every day every day almost every yeah. day yeah um I think that's all we really cook yeah, we cook like, American foods when we're having friends over or like once a while yeah. when it's us and family. And obviously but... if we eat out or order in. Yeah, but if it's just us, we almost yeah. every day eat Ghana food. Yeah. So. All right, uh, for the last and final con of living in Ghana, kind of all of the cons kind of tie into each other. Everything in Ghana is tied together. But it's, it's healthcare. <laughs> the healthcare, um, the general health care is awful yeah um you can go to specialists who studied abroad and did stuff like that and to pay a lot of money and get yeah it's care really of. expensive which not a lot of people can afford um but health care is awful like i remember i had to go like in all my experiences with people i've talked to or if i've ever been to the hospital with somebody i never had to go to the hospital myself um i had malaria like once but I was fine. I just stayed at home and like got better. But um, man, every time someone went, the, the doctor just says, take Tremadol, take Tremadol. I was talking to Mary, one of my friends from Ghana yesterday. Was it yesterday? The day before yesterday. And we were talking about Ghana health insurance versus the insurance here. Mm -hmm. And even though the insurance here works, if you have insurance here, they will take care of half, however much your cost is going to be. And then you're going to pay for some of it too. Whereas the one in Ghana is free, fortunately for us. But then if you take it to the hospital, almost every sickness, no matter what, the only thing you're going to get is like tramadol, paracetamol, or just like translocate. Like what? You know, no matter what. And then if you get any other medication from there, you're going to pay for it. But then they tell us we have free, I mean, free insurance, which... We don't think it works so we were talking about it and how funny it was that's one thing that's really scary and the death rate is really high like if you look at ghana um average male and female death age it's like 60 and 70 it's like really low and we're always hearing about people who are sick or passed away from ghana like at least it's monthly stressful. 
Yeah, and it's really, really stressful on Laura and it's really sad. Yeah. And for me, I've had two people in my entire life that were in my family pass away. And one was really my old. cousin who was, he died at birth. So that's just because they knew he was going to pass away. And then my grandmother who was very old and very sick and we knew she was going to pass away. And we were ready for her to pass away. And so having somebody just die because of infrastructure issues or healthcare issues is very uncommon uh, here because of the healthcare we have available. All right, so everything put together, it definitely, for those of you who are thinking about visiting or living or moving to Ghana, do it 100%. It's, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, and for us, our, our current situation or life, it's not ideal for us to move and live in Ghana right now. Yeah. Uh, mainly because I'm schooling and uh, Laura has a business and things are going like that. So it's for us, it's best to stay here for now in America, but we definitely have in our future plans to move back to Ghana definitely and do going things back. like that. <laughs> yeah. And so for those of you who are thinking about it, just do it. Plane ticket, it can be expensive. Yeah. Just buy in advance. Don't buy it during holidays. Mm -hmm. um, buy a round trip because that's always cheaper than one way. Um, Make and, friends there. <laughs> yes. You need friends. You need connections. Yes. If you need help getting connections, let us know. Comment down below or message us. Uh, go to our Instagram that we'll leave down below and just message us and we can help you get connections there to help you find a house or a building equipment or places to stay because there's so... If you so... don't meet nice people, yeah, yeah. it can be tough. Yeah. Like, if you get into the bad ring of people who are scammers or just looking yeah. to take advantage of you because you're a foreigner or you're different... And they think you're rich, you can... You'll have yeah, the worst mindset of Ghana ever. So just remember those pros and cons those cons can all be taken care of um if you have if you have connections or if Good you have people money around you and mm -hmm. yeah and so just remember keep those things in mind when you're making your decisions make sure you're prepared being prepared is very important hey okay, thanks for watching our video guys uh if you have any questions leave it in the comment down below subscribe to our channel if you already haven't like this video and we we'll see you in our next one bye bye